good evening, everybody. Good. It's good to be here tonight, and do appreciate everybody that's come to be with us, and we're uh, glad to have Jenny Boggs here with us tonight, and uh, we'll, uh, we've already introduced her there downstairs, but we'll do so again. But um, just a couple of things I want to make mention of here uh, this evening as far as announcements goes. Uh, of course, uh, we will be um, uh, continuing with our um, study there next uh, Wednesday night. We're going to start on uh, how to study the Bible, and that'll be a, a new little study series that we're going to start come next Wednesday night, so keep that in mind, and then remember that, and then, of course, next Wednesday night we'll have our, our mission friends class, and then our uh, GAs, our girls in action, and then, of course, our RAs, and and youth classes will start back again there on Wednesday night. So keep that in mind. Remember that. Also, uh, the uh, put put it on your calendar. Coming up on September the 24th, uh, we're going to be having a church picnic, and that's going to be at Big Ridge. And so uh, there will be more details to come, but Hannah Richardson is the, the one that's in charge of that. So if you have any questions or anything, you can see Hannah. But she'll be getting us some more information there to come, so keep that in mind. Remember that. All righty, there will be a deacon's meeting Sunday morning at 9.15, so 9.14, I'm sorry, I, I, I stand corrected at 9.14, so uh, keep that in mind, remember that, that's coming up Sunday morning, so all deacons, keep that in mind, remember that. All righty, is there any other uh, announcements that we need to make mention of this evening that I have forgotten? If not, let's have a word of prayer tonight. We definitely want to remember all of those that are on our prayer list, that are in our bulletin, and also that's on our screen. So we want to pray and remember those tonight and uh, keep those in prayer. All right. We have a baby dedication yes, yes, baby dedication will be on Sunday morning, and uh, that will be for Dylan and Krista Godsey's uh, baby. So we're looking forward to that. And so uh, that'll be, uh, is that two for the year? Is that two or three? three? Three of the year. Yeah, three of the year. So uh, we've been blessed. We have certainly been blessed here in our church with babies. So thank the Lord for that. So uh, looking forward to that on Sunday morning. Any other announcements? Yes, definitely. Let's pray for Pat. Remember her uh, family. We're going to pray. Anyone else? school whose sister got real sick and they had to take her to the hospital and I promised her that I'd put her on a prayer list. Her name is Brenda. Let's remember Brenda this evening in prayer. Let's remember all those that um, are in Florida, the victims there that's having to face the, the storm there, the hurricane there that come through and the loss. Let's remember them tonight in prayer. Anybody else? Well, if not, let's pray this evening. Father, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, another privilege it is to be in your house tonight. And we do pray, Father, Lord, we have so many prayer requests that, Lord, that we uh, have that, Lord, are, are on our prayer list. And we just ask and pray that, Father, you would work, Lord, according to your will in each and every one of those. We pray, Father, Lord, that you would... Just bless this service tonight, Lord. We pray for Hunter as he comes and leads us in song. Lord, him and Cheryl, we pray that you would bless them. God, we pray tonight, Father, Lord, for Jenny as she comes and shares. We pray that you would just open our heart, Father. Lord, to receive, Father, your word, to receive the, the mission, the work that, Father, you are doing. Lord, not only here in, in Union County and Maynardville, Father, and in our own hearts and lives individually, Father, and in our families and in our community, Father, but, Lord, what you're doing in the Philippines. And, God, we thank you for that. And we thank you, Father, for Jenny. We thank you, Father, for her willingness to serve you. We thank you for her willingness to go and to answer that call, Father. And we, we pray that, Father, for each and every one of us, Lord, that, Father, you may give opportunity to or you're calling, Father, to missions or to mission work. We pray that, Father, we would surrender and do that. Father, we love you. We thank you and all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. You pray for Hunter tonight. So. number 54 out of the library.
thankful this evening for the faithfulness of the Lord. And uh, he certainly is faithful to us. Even when we're not faithful, he still is faithful. And uh, I'm so thankful for that. Well, it certainly is good to have uh, Miss Jenny Boggs here with us tonight. And uh, she is uh, no stranger uh, at all. She has uh, become a, a good friend of our church. And uh, we're so thankful for her as we get to partner and serve with her through Bible release time, and that's been a wonderful uh, blessing, a wonderful joy uh, for our church this past uh, school year, and we're looking forward to getting started again. And uh, we had the privilege of last Friday getting to go to Manorville Elementary School and uh, got to walk around with Miss Shirley, and she took us around to the classroom, and uh, we got to see several of the students that come last year and uh, they were so excited and they're looking forward to getting to come back and then we got to talk to some new ones and encourage some of them to come and be with us so we're hopeful uh, that uh, we'll get to see a good number there again this year and, and be much in prayer for that and uh, just what a wonderful program that that is so we encourage you please continue to pray for that program and if you would love to help and volunteer and serve in that program you can see me or you can see Jenny tonight after service because she could give you all kinds of information. So uh, just remember that. But I, we're glad tonight that she's come to share about her mission trip to the Philippines. So you pray for her this evening as she comes and shares. thanking the church and for not only helping with Philippines but for coming alongside me with Bible release time. At Union County we had 506 students enrolled last year and that's 63% of the county's second through fifth graders. So over half got to go to church, got to hear about the love of God, got to learn Bible stories. For kids that come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, all youth activities, it encourages them. It strengthens their foundation. Why do I have hope for my future? It's because I know Bible stories. I know the same God that took care of David and Goliath, or David when he fought Goliath, or the, the same God that provided for Ruth is the same God that's going to provide for me. And to be able to instill that into these kids is, to me, it's exciting because they're going to know that same God that I know. So thank you so very, very much. Keep praying for this program. Um, in my counties that I work in, we're up to having 27 schools, and that's going to be about 2,000 kids that we're going to be able to, that we have the opportunity to serve. Hopefully they will all come, but just keep them in, in your prayers. So on to the Philippines. Let's move to the other side of the world. Um, so I, I do have a slideshow that I would like to share as, we, as I talk about my trip. Um, because of your generosity, we were able to share cases of Bibles with the Seminary of Vining Hand Bible Baptist Church, which is the church that I work with. It's located in Diet in the Philippines. It's about seven to nine hours of a drive east of Manila. But um, so we'll get going. This is the, the Philippine flag. And next one. There's where the Philippines is, if anybody was wondering. When you get on an airplane, you're going to be in the air approximately 23 hours. Um, it takes us, we typically go from here to Houston, to Honolulu, to Guam, 
to the Philippines. So a lot of legs to get there. And um, we, were, we were very fortunate with good flights this trip. Um, we did have some layovers and a lot of you saw things on Facebook about me getting stuck in Manila. And yes, we did. Um, but God provided a place for us to stay somewhere safe and we're very thankful for that. So next one. So the Philippines is made up of 113 million people. It is the 13th largest country in the world. Their average annual income is about $4,800 a year. That's, that's what a lot of households bring home in a month in the United States. The U.S. average is $33,133. The national religions, they do consider themselves a Christian nation, um, but the national religions, they're 80% Catholic. That does make it a little easier for us to go in because these people have heard of Christ. They have heard of God. They have heard these names, but they only know religion. They don't know relationship, and that's what we are there to share with them. The next part is 5% Muslim. Most of the Muslim community is down in the south of the Philippines in the islands. Um, and then 4.6% cults, and those are just family religions. Only 2.6% is other, and that's where Baptists fail, fall. 2.6% of 113 million people. That's just such a huge door that when I think about it, it's overwhelming. I think, how, how can we make any difference in this? But then the Bible tells me in Jude 122, having compassion, making a difference in some. I can't go into a, a location and think, I can't make any difference, so I'm not going to do anything. God calls me to just have compassion and try to make a difference. He's going to do the rest of it. Next one. This is the team that went this year. I've served on teams from, this is our smallest one so far, the three of us, up to a team of 14. Um, our team this year was uh, Pastor Keith Buckner. He's by the window. He's from New Liberty Baptist Church. His associate pastor is Chris Lynch and then myself. Keith, Chris, and I, we have traveled together four out of my five trips. Um, so we're, we're old hands at being teammates, and which is really good because I know how Keith likes his coffee, and I know I need to speak louder for Chris. So it's all good. So here's my verse. And if some have compassion, making a difference. I first really started to love this verse about a year and a half ago, and it seems like every season of my life since then, God has just drilled it into my heart in those times where I get so overwhelmed, even with Bible release time. I look and say, well, I've got 40 schools that I need to get into. And God says, just take it one at a time. I've got a plan. We're going to make a difference together. Next one. So this is the area of the Philippines that I work in. It's called the Luzon Province. There is a very small yellow square in the bottom right-hand corner, and that's Diet. That is my home base. Diet is known for pineapple farms, and Dole Pineapple is actually has a base there. Um, they're a very small, very rural area, um, just very sweet people. The electricity comes and goes through the day. The Internet is very sketchy. Um, it would about be easier to do um, smoke signals sometimes than trying to use a telephone. Um, but they are, they are precious people. It, it does have a coastline, so there is a lot of fishing, a lot of um, importing right there. Next one. So here's our Dole Pineapple. This is what you see when you first enter the city. Um, that at one time was a fountain, um, but that, that's gone away. But they have maintained at least the sign there. Next one. We went this year specifically to work at a family camp. Instead of doing vacation Bible school like we do here stateside, they put on camp where they invite entire families to come in. They literally sleep on the church compound. They eat at the church. They're there. We were there for four days doing camp. Um, Pastor Keith was the lead speaker. We had two national pastors, and then Pastor uh, Chris was also a speaker for us. So their title was The Regeneration of Today's Generation. In the Philippines, because the majority of the families are a Catholic heritage, a lot of times it's very difficult to get the parents and the grandparents, but we can very easily reach the children. So even though we invite the whole family in, very rarely do we see anybody other than the kids come. Most of the churches are 90% attended by people that are 18 and younger. Um, kids come for various reasons, but they are incredibly faithful to church. Next one. 
When we first got to camp, this is our registration table. This is made up of multiple churches. By any hand, Bible Baptist Church is actually a mother church to 21 churches underneath it. These 21 churches are pastored by pastors that came out of By and Ehan. So whenever they do an event, everybody comes together to do it. Next one. This is a group, a, a group picture of all of us teachers for the camp. Um, teachers were made up of the pastors, youth pastors, young ministers, and By and Ehan also has a seminary, of course, where we sent the Bibles, and a lot of the seminary students were, were teaching at this camp. This is just a back view of By and Ehan Church. Um, it, it looks very nice, doesn't it? Nice, shiny floor. It had just rained, so the floor was actually very wet and slippery. Um, but they do an amazing job with what they have. Um, the last time I was there, there were no windows. Um, there were just openings, and they have recently put in sliding windows. So that was very nice. There's these little lizards that are about this long that love crawling all over the, the walls and all over the ceilings. So having those windows in now kind of decreases the population of the lizards that we fight during the day. Next one. This little girl in the, the red and black that Pastor Keith is praying with, when she got up, she professed that she had been saved. Um, so we were very thankful to be able to pray with her and witness this. This is going to be a short snippet of the youth choir. There were over 220 kids that attended this camp. This youth choir is made up of 180 of the students, and um, we're only going to show a snippet of it because I enjoyed the song so much, I forgot I was videotaping, and I laid my phone down. So, so nobody will get sick. We're just going to show a snippet of it, but go ahead, Mr. Francis. So yes, they were speak or singing in English. English is the primary language of the younger generation. Back in the early 80s, the government mandated that English be taught as a primary language in schools. So if you meet anybody that goes to school, then English will be their primary language. And the home language, which is called Tagalog, it's their secondary, and that's what's taught by grandparents, aunts, and uncles. So you can always tell who is educated and who is not by what language they primarily speak and um, this is a typical altar call at any service um, it just absolutely amazed me the first time i saw it but pastor avail is the pastor of the church he's the gentleman in the blue that's up on the stage he does not give a soft spoken if jesus has spoken to your heart um, a, just a, a, a just sweet um altar call he says you you come talk to the lord right now and they do in droves <laughs> and the first time he said it i was like oh i'm a little bit afraid but i was just amazed at at how they come and they're so diligent they're not just coming because pastor avail has said you come talk to the lord he they're coming because they're they're praying for their siblings they're praying for their parents who are not yet reached they're praying to see what God wants them to do. A lot of the young ladies, they're praying that God will make them a pastor's wife. And they actually have classes at the seminary for young ladies that have a burden to be a pastor's wife. So it, it's just a beautiful sight. This little fella is my dear buddy, TJ. Uh, he actually just turned 11. And when I was speaking to his mom and dad before I went over, I said, what can I, what can I bring the boys? He's got a little boy or a little brother and a little sister. And she sent me a video, and TJ says, Ma'am Jenny, which is Aunt Jenny, Ma'am Jenny, I want a backpack for school, but I want it to be camouflaged because I'm a soldier for the Lord. I said, Absolutely. So TJ and I, John, his brother, they both got camouflaged backpacks, and they were so excited because they're soldiers for the Lord. But during one of our prayer meetings, TJ prayed that the Lord would make him a pastor, just like his daddy. 
His daddy is Pastor Bernie, who is a dear, dear friend of mine and Bill's. One thing that I'm just so thankful to God is that in these many trips, he's formed such close relationships. Um, I feel like their kids are my nieces and nephews. They, they pray with Bill and I. When Bill and I have had heartache in our home, we'll do a Zoom meeting, and, and they'll pray for us. And sometimes I feel like they're just right down the road, and they're not 23 hours away. So next one. I love this picture. The little girl um, on the left with the red bow, her name is Hart. And I met her in 2016 when I was teaching preschool and there at Bayanihan, and she immediately stole my heart. She's a huge smile, very rambunctious, just full of love. Well, when I went back this time, I really didn't expect her to remember me. It had been a couple of years since I had seen her, and she came running up. Ma'am Jenny, Ma'am Jenny, do you remember who I am? And that same sweet smile, those same dimples. And I was just so thrilled to see that she's still in church, still learning, still helping another generation, but it's just such a precious example of how the little ones, they remember what we do with them. Sometimes we think they're not paying any attention, but they, they remember. Next one. And this beach ball, every time before we go, I, we always send a message, hey, what can we bring for camp? So this year we took a cornhole set, and they always want the beach ball. It is 60 inches when you blow it up, and it weighs about six pounds when it's in the box. But they love that thing. During camp, we think of all the, the games and things we do at Vacation Bible School, and that's hard to come up with things that everybody's going to like. But these kids love volleyball. Next one. These are four of our seminary students that um, are praying to be pastors and are looking for locations to start a church. And this little girl in her coffee cup, we never went anywhere without seeing her in her coffee cup in her hand. It was 110 degrees, and she wanted her coffee as hot as she could get it. No thank you, but whatever. These are our church babies. So the little girl on the left with the white dress on, her name is Pinion. That's her nickname. I can't pronounce her, her actual name, but that means little tree. She's Pastor Bernie's baby daughter. The little boy next to her in the yellow shirt, his name is Kish. The little girl next to that, that is um, Tabitha. And then the little boy standing up with the white shirt, that is the pastor's grandson, Kyle, K-A-E-L. And if I could have put that kid in my suitcase, he would be standing here beside me. He would curl up in your lap, and he would rub my ear and say, Jesus loves me, and just sing. Oh, he's precious. The little girl is one of the children that actually came from the island church that you're going to see pictures of here in just a minute. When they say go to camp, they mean it. So kids would pay 450 pesos, which would be approximately $8 to go to camp. All of their meals were provided for four days. All they had to bring was their tent, their plate, their spoon, and plate, spoon, and a, a cup to drink out of. That's the little girl's coffee cup. They camped on the property. These are our cafeteria ladies. These ladies got up every morning before 4 a.m. and started cooking for 420 plus students and all of us three meals a day you don't store things in a refrigerator there because their refrigerator is too expensive to run so every morning we had fresh fruit fresh breads fresh eggs but they would just sing and it was precious to go towards the back of the church and hear these ladies just as chipper as could be they're cooking over a fire and it's a hundred plus degrees i'm absolutely melting and they are having the time of their lives the lady that's in the red shirt is actually cutting on a sawhorse that had been cut down. That was her cutting board. Um, but hot meals, all three meals a day. Next one. Um, this is a short little video of the kids saying thank you. Bill and I have a dear friend that sells sunglasses on the side. So I reached out to him and I said, hey, let me take some sunglasses to my pastors over there. I just need about 20 pairs. So we get to his house and he said, how many do you really want? I said, oh, whatever you'll send. He sent me two cases of sunglasses. So every camper and um, teacher got a pair of sunglasses. And this is them saying thank you to him. Hey, uh, let's take one pair of these watching how many sunglasses. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cooper. I'm going to have one. How many parting gifts at camp do you go to where you get sunglasses and a bag of rice? So that, that's how we operate over there. 
this and um, part of camp is competition everything is a competition who reads the best who uh, memorized the most scriptures who plays the best basketball and then every team also had to make a camp video it had to be between three and five minutes and it had to be wonderful so this is the winner's video and i hope you all enjoy it it will literally give you a a view of what a day at camp is going to look like it's only about three minutes long camp in a nutshell um, during that video during the basketball game you saw it an, an older gentleman uh, playing basketball and that was pastor chow and um, pastor chow was a very good friend of mine i met on my first trip and there are three things pastor chow loved loved it was jesus it's kids and it's basketball so pastor chow heard we were having camp his church is about three hours away and he showed up um kind of unannounced but we weren't surprised that he showed up and on friday night pastor chow had just finished his basketball game had gone to the sidelines and had a massive heart attack and passed away but what a time for him he'd been teaching earlier in that day he'd been showing kids about or telling kids about jesus and then he'd been playing basketball he was a precious man. He could talk the paint off of walls, but I count it such a blessing to be able to call him my friend. Um, so I, I wanted to make sure that I put Pastor Chow in our in our slideshow. And this was the ladies' class during camp. I was able to spend time with the pastors' wives and the seminary ladies. Um, we talked about making a difference. We studied Jude one twenty two the entire week. 
and they are precious. We were able to take some gifts over for them. So us adult ladies, we played games too, and uh, everybody went home with maybe some earrings or some lotion or, or something. But I want our pastor's wives to always know how loved and how appreciated they are. Sometimes they're that hidden figure that, that we don't hear about a lot, and they are so incredibly special. Next one. This is a ladies' fellowship that we had on Saturday. I had about 130 ladies present um, through some gifts and donations. Once again, we played a, a gift game, and um, the prize of the day was a day at a spa so ladies could go get their fingernails or their toes done. And um, there was quite the fight over those, <laughs> but we talked about how God made us on purpose, with a purpose. He put me specifically here in the United States with blonde hair and short legs, and he put them specifically over there with dark hair, and they can reach people I will never be able to reach. But he made us the way he wants us. And isn't that what our kids need to know today, is that God made them perfect the way he wanted them to be, and he loves them just like they are, just like he made them. So Easter tradition, I was able to spend Easter over there. Um, over here, you know, we do Good Friday services sometimes, and then maybe on Saturday we do an egg hunt, and then on Sunday we hunt maybe a sunrise service. Over there, even in our Baptist churches, the only day they really celebrate is Good Friday. Um, but unfortunately, in Good Friday, a lot of the cults, um, they have a very warped sense of celebrating Good Friday. A lot of the Catholic churches, there's parades that happen all day long, pretty much the, uh, for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The churches are in competition to who can see who can do the most elaborate floats. Um, on, if you'll go back one screen, Mr. Hamilton, or, or, on the, the right-hand side, there's a gentleman, and you may not be able to make him out very well. He actually has a whip, and he's walking down the street whipping himself. And a lot of places on the street, street corners, you'll see a cross that's been erected, and people will be laying at the foot of the cross, and somebody will be taking a cane to them and whipping them. Or a lot of these people will be going down the street, and somebody will be whipping them with a cane, or they'll whip it themselves. They think that what Christ did wasn't enough, so they need to help him. They need to repent of their sins that way. But the even more sickening part is they don't even feel this. They're either high or they're drunk, so they don't really have any feeling of, of what they're doing to themselves. It's all a show, and it's so incredibly sad. About two hours south of where they're at, of where I'm at, they still actually practice crucifixion, not into death, but just for a show. But they do put people on a cross. Next one. So anybody get to church like this Sunday morning, Easter Sunday? This is how I went. Um, I feel like I'm a pretty brave person. I, I enjoy roller coasters. The faster, the higher, the better. But when they said, I'm going via a catamaran out to the island on Easter Sunday, I thought, okay, this is going to be interesting. And I walk out to the marina, and I'm walking down the steps, and this boat is about, probably about this high out of the water. And I look down, and I think, well, my legs are not long enough to just step up onto that boat. Well, the closer I got to the boat, I really felt like I was going to cry. So I get to the boat captain, and I said, can I just crawl on the boat? And he's like, okay. And it just looked at me like I was crazy, and I felt like I was crazy. I really feel like God took his hand and just pushed that boat on down into the water, and I was able to crawl up into it. The boat is about this wide, and it'll hold about 20 Philippine people. Um, pretty loud, but you'll get to hear that here in just a second. But I had about a 45-minute ride out to Vinzon's Island for Easter Sunday morning. This was about, about 4.30 Sunday morning. Next. Yes. So 45 minutes of this right behind us. Um, but doesn't it look like Gilligan's Island? It's just absolutely beautiful. The island that I was headed to has no electricity, no running water. Um, some of the houses do have generators. Some of them have car batteries that they run electricity off of. Some of the houses have satellite on them. Um, so they, they have TV. But the majority of the kids that I'm able to work with on this island, and you'll see a picture of them here in just a moment, um, will be uneducated. There's no church on the island. The island is, or I'm sorry, there's no school on the island. The island's too far away from the mainland. So more than likely, the, the ladies will be homemakers, which is fine, but the men will be fishermen, and that's just generation. That, that's all they have. Um, other than owning a market, and I love the way their market system works, is say Mr. Billy may own the rice market. 
and then Miss Cheryl may own the, the bread market, and then Miss Ann may own the fruit market, and somebody else owns the meat market. You only buy from each other. But then there's one person that owns a market that has everything that they buy from everybody else and bring it to their market and jack the prices up. I don't quite understand that, but everybody owns a market. So the next one. Um, this is the island that I was on, Benzons Island. BBBM means Bynehan Bible Baptist Mission. It just means it designates that they're part of Bynehan because it is well known throughout the region. This is Pastor Jake and his wife with their brand new baby who was only about three months old at the time. Pastor Jake and his wife go to the island every Sunday and every Wednesday and every Thursday. They live about two hours away from it. Um, and they have an empty lot that they go and put posts in the ground and run these sheer curtains, and that's what creates their church. This is their church. We did a feeding ministry. It was probably about 7.30 that morning. We did rice and egg, and then I was able to teach about Daniel in the lion's den. I took a, a felt board and felt characters, and the kids loved it. And they were very leery of me at first. I think the majority of them had never seen a white person before, maybe on TV, but never in real life. So they would come up to me and kind of touch my freckle and then look at their finger and see if it was going to rub off on them. Precious kids. Um, let's see. And um, later that afternoon, we went to um, Pastor Mark's church. Pastor Mark has a jungle church. These children are close enough. Um, to be able to go to school, so they do, they do speak English. Next one. And here's what his church looks like. It's just three-sided cement building with a tin roof. Um, about 80% of his congregation is kids, but they were super excited to share everything they knew with the American lady. Next. And this is his youth group, his church. And they are precious. So they, I would teach them a song. They would teach me a song. So we had a great time with him. Um, Bionny Hen also has a preschool, and these are some pictures from there. This is the, the pre-K and kindergarten class. Um, they are a school that they are considered a Christian school, but a lot of the people in the area will pay to send their children to this school that they don't go to church. So the unchurched are actually paying for this church to be in or to for this school to be in operation. And the kids, obviously, they, they wear uniforms that the school provides. The school provides their meals. Um, uh, just a sweet, sweet little classroom. This is our third, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. We did a Bible lesson with them, and then we taught them how to play cornhole. Um, they had, we won some prizes through that. We did a Bible drill with them. They taught me some stuff I didn't know. Next one. This is us giving away some prizes that day. Bible presentation, and this is where I want to thank you all specifically. Um, you all helped us to take a couple of cases of Bibles over there. Um, the reason that's so important is because Bibles are incredibly expensive. They're expensive stateside to get a good one. But to get one in the Philippines, you're talking somebody's couple of months of their income to be able to afford one. So most of the time, what they have is just paperback. Well, what happens to paperback Bibles when it's 180% humidity? They shrivel up to nothing, no matter what they do to protect them. So we were able to take cases of leather-bound Thompson Chain Study Bibles, and thank you so much for helping us. These are just some of the pastors that were there for us to literally hand the Bibles to. Um, this day, a typhoon was coming in, so some of them were landlocked and couldn't get to us because of flooding. I just want to introduce you to a couple of my um, dear friend pastors. This is Pastor Mon Philippe. He is actually the main pastor's son. He is being trained to take over the church when Pastor Avell retires. And Mon is praying to come to the United States. If you'll help us to pray with him, he has a meeting with the Department for a Visa in October. It's very expensive. It's um, a lot of steps he has to go through. We have written letters of recommendation. We've written letters saying he will be staying with us so that the visa department in the Philippines knows he has somewhere to stay here, but it's only temporary. We had to date everything. He will only be in our house from this day to this day. He has a wife and a little boy. Kale is his little boy. Um, so hopefully if he gets to, to come stateside, I'd love to introduce him to you all. Um, 
He is a fantastic musician, piano player, and singer. Next one. This is Pastor Bernie. His wife is Zi. She's a very, very good friend of mine. And Pastor Bernie asked that you help him to pray for dedication of his members. A lot of his members, they'll, they'll be in one week and he won't see them for six months and then they'll come back. Like we see that sometimes. It's the same thing over there. Um, he is also praying about entering into a new ministry in Cambodia. Um, I would hate to lose him, but I know God's got amazing plans for him. Pastor Joe Mar, um, his church was the very first church I got to visit uh, four trips ago. So it was very neat to be able to see him again. Next one. On our very last full day in diet, we went around to churches that we could get to that were not flooded out. And this is just a couple of pictures of what some of the other churches look like. Um, BBM Mercedes, this is Pastor Bernie's church. It's really only about 20 minutes from Bayani Hand. And this is, is his church. He is building it to look a lot like by any hand, just on a smaller scale. When we got there that morning, um, we had breakfast. That's fine. We had family-style breakfast. I love that. Every time we eat, it's family-style. So it just reinforces that, that bond that we have with them. And they actually made us French toast. And so we had family-style breakfast and, and a time of devotion and just fellowship together. Um, Basud. Pastor Anwar, um, his church is about an hour away from us, a little bit of a drive. It's a jungle church, but he has been pastor there for about 12 years. So they actually have, a, as you can see, a, a very nice building that is there. Um, pastor Anwar failed to tell his wife that we were coming. And of course, you, you can't have visitors and not offer them something to eat or drink. So he sent one of his church members up the coconut tree in the back and they cut down a coconut and we had fresh coconut uh, milk, and then they showed us how to open it up and eat that fresh um, coconut flesh, and it was very good. Um, but this is Basu. This is the original picture from 2016. At this point, the church was literally just three-sided with block not all the way up. That yellow is hiding kind of some huge gaps where they had ran out of the funds for the time. This is Basu right now. His wife, Lee, um, that baby she's holding was nine days old. And she was at everything that we went to. God bless her heart. Um, but they have done amazing things in their community. She actually has opened a cooking school out back of the church. So some of the ladies of the community can start selling their own baked goods. These churches, one of the things I love about them is they, they are helping to teach their members trades. Um, poverty is just everywhere. And you'll be driving down the street and people are just sitting on the sidewalk they they have no income they don't have a home and it, it's hopelessness so not only are these churches showing a hope through Christ but they're also teaching them skills um Paracale I didn't get to go there but I wanted to show you the size of this church so that church is about 12 15 feet deep and less than 10 feet wide and they have to do church in um in sections so one group will come at one time they leave and another group comes at another time to get everybody in and out um, their pastor and his wife they are getting ready to go to um, somewhere in Japan and I can't remember the name um, but they have always had the intention of going into Japan and starting a work she has family there and um, this is Pastor Daniel and his wife, Jolin. This is a church that we did get to visit. Daniel and Jolin have been dear friends of ours for a long time. And we have watched this church literally go from just a open lot up to what it is today. And when I left the church, there were no windows and there were no doors. And the first church that I visited back stateside to share my story like I am tonight, I shared Pastor Daniel's prayer request. And it was for them to be able to get doors because there are very poisonous snakes in their area and these snakes were coming into the church building and endangering people that were there. Well, the people that live on the church compound, they sleep on the altar of the church every night and they were afraid somebody was gonna get bit. So um, this church, they were able to supply doors to uh, Pastor Daniel's church. I love that. This church had never seen or heard of Pastor Daniel, but a need was shared and a need was met. Um, and now that church and Pastor Daniel's church, they work together on several projects. Next one, a boodle fight. Who loves a good church fellowship? 
So let me just put in your mind what a boodle fight looks like. If we would have taken the tables downstairs and lined them down the hallway, end to end, and lined all the food up down the center of the table, no silverware, no napkins, no plates, anything like that. Everybody puts on a plastic glove on one hand and the other hand is behind your back. And you go up to the table, line up, somebody says, ready, set, go, and everybody eats what's in front of them or if they wanna fight and go down a couple of tables because that pizza looks better than the pizza in front of you, that's what a boodle fight is. It started from the military where the military um, soldiers would come in and they only had so long to eat their dinner or their breakfast so it would be a boodle fight and now that's a church fellowship and this is us having a boodle fight um, we were on the good end we had like a, a teriyaki and a, a barbecue and some fish and uh, some um, I'm trying to think of some uh, shrimp all kinds of good stuff because we're there on the coast some great vegetables some great fruits but then you get down to the youth end and it was hot dogs and some other stuff that I, I could not identify, so I'm very glad I was up on the adult end of it. But if you want to show just a clip of that, Mr. Franklin, or Mr. Francis. That tells you who your friends are. So this is the outside of Bionee Hand Bible Baptist Church. The very first time I went, the two buildings to the sides were not there, and the building in the back was just one level. Um, since then, in the four years, they have actually gone up two levels. At one point, there's three, and then all the new classrooms are on the side of it. Next year, they're going to celebrate their 20th anniversary there in Diet, and they're hoping to have their auditorium completely done. Um, they're actually going to go up and put like bleachers on the side because they are just full to capacity. And um, this is, for me, this picture is the most beautiful and the most sad um, because it was taken right as we were getting in our car to leave. Um, I truly feel like there's a part of my heart that's there. Um, I, I love the people. When you get to buy a knee hand, you have to kind of go down a, a little embankment and there's gates there. So we pull up, you honk the horn to let them know that you're there and some of the, the ministers will open the gates and, and you'll go in and somebody's always practicing a song, singing, there's kids playing. To me, that's what heaven's going to sound like. It's absolutely beautiful and I know there's conflict and stuff goes on, but, but for my eyes and my ears, God says, you just enjoy this. Heaven's going to be so much sweeter, but I'm going to give you a little taste right now of what it's going to sound like to your ears. So, so I just wanted to share this, this picture with you. Um, thank you for allowing me to, to share my heart, to share my story. Um, I do plan on going back next April. We'll be able to actually work in schools. Schools will still be in session at the point that we're going. Um, we do just like Bible release time here, but we're actually able to do it in the schools there. They bring all the kids into a courtyard. We do a Bible release time and, and then invite all the kids to church. So if you'll um, help us to pray for that trip, for um, God to open doors while we're over there for safety um, and, and for team members to come alongside of us. But it's just an amazing opportunity to get to go over there. Um, I, I grew up in a family that loved missions. I loved missionaries. And I always knew God would let me at least support but the fact that he has allowed me this opportunity to, to travel and to be a part of, I absolutely stand amazed. Who am I that God lets me do this? But he does, and he's got a plan for each one of us. Not everybody's gonna go to the Philippines or go to Africa and may not even go to another state, but he's got such an amazing plan for each one of us. Each one of us can touch somebody that somebody else cannot touch. So thank you. Thank you for, for loving the Philippines through me and for, for giving me time to, to share my story with you all. If anybody got any questions about the Philippines or my trip in general? We are 12 hours ahead. I am 12 hours ahead when I'm over there. So, so when I want to talk to Bill and the boys, I, I go before church and and try to make a, a phone call or facetime them and they'll just be getting up for the day um i guess it's because of 
being so far ahead, the sun comes up at like 3.45, 4.15 in the morning. And when we work, we work until 10, 11, 12 at night doing youth activities and things. And then you go back to your hotel and sleep for a few hours and get up and do the next thing. But I, I always stand amazed at how we, we land and we get going and, and you've got plenty of energy. And I don't, I don't know if it's adrenaline or it's just God dumping energy into us, but you would think after that long plane ride, but, but you just hit the ground and, and you get going. Yes. How long were you there this last trip? 13 days. Yes. And we tried to go at least 12 to 15 days because it literally takes us two days to get there. So it, if you're just going a week, you've, you've pretty much eaten up half your time, half your time going. Anybody else? I have another question about yes. the, the adults. Yes. Uh, isn't that funny that the parents and grandparents, when they must, they must see changes in their children, how happy and full of joy they are, and you know, yes. Do you ever absolutely. try to slip that in, go home and tell tell your mom? Yes, absolutely. And a lot of these kids, they invite their pastor to come in and do Bible studies, and the family will let them come in. But, but they won't come to church. It's very difficult to, to get them to accept salvation. Um, but, but chipping away a little bit of a time. These churches, most of them, these pastors are, are not bivocational. They're, they work in the church seven days a week. Most of the time, it's the wives who actually do the income. And they're, for the main part, they're all teachers. And they teach at public and private school. Um, by any hand, preschool they pay their teachers twenty dollars a month so for the most part these families the pastor families are living on less than fifty dollars a month most of them have farms they've got chickens and um, there are cattle over there but they don't slaughter them they just use them for for meat um, uh, pigs are huge over there they're they're cheap to feed they're cheap to slaughter so we eat a ton of pork um, most of the churches on the compound they have a, a pig lot and, and chickens and it's almost like a commune they just they just help each other and the dollar the american dollar is worth about 56 pesos over there so we can take the majority of our pastors we could take about 23 27 pastors out to dinner at a pizza place so we all get pizza um everybody gets a meal everybody gets a dessert and we're normally not out about sixty dollars. Have you learned to speak Tagalog? No, I know about five words. <laughs> um, I will tell you a real quick funny story, and then I promise I'll be done. I was on my very first trip. We were riding in a jeepney, which is just a bus where your seats face each other. You're just on a bench row, and we we're just getting to know each other. And I was telling about my mamma. Well, eyes got really big, and I was like, what? I'm just telling about my grandmother. Well, we get off of the jeepney, and the pastor's wife pulls me to the side and says, I just want you to know that mamma in Tagalog means ghost. So this whole time, they thought I was talking about my ghost. <laughs> but I probably ought to make sure I know what I'm talking about next time. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate you. If you and Cheryl would come and get a song together, Jenny, I'm going to ask if you would just stand right here. And everybody that can and will, let's come around and let's fellowship with Jenny and, and thank her for coming tonight and, and coming and sharing. And uh, I'm thankful that our church was able to, to be just a very, very small part of this and, and just being able to pray for her and pray for them and being able to help the pastors and, and their wives with Bibles and I know many of you women sent cards and letters and different things like that, so very, very thankful for that. So if everybody would, come around and let's fellowship with her tonight. Thank her for coming and being with us.
worship follow. Uh, but let's just be much in prayer. We've got a good service ahead, I believe, this coming week. And a uh, good time for the Lord. So let's be much in prayer. Looking forward to that. Brother Kyle, would you dismiss us tonight in prayer? Thank you.